Hello and welcome to the channel NCERT lessons. In this lesson, we are going to study the second part of the chapter development. The topics we are going to cover are income and other criteria, public facilities and sustainability of development. So let's begin. In the previous part, we studied about development and its meaning and different features. And we concluded that development does not mean only the goal of better income. That is, there are other non-material factors which are linked to human development. Means, the person looks for other goals in their life other than income and those goals are needed for a quality life and a happy life. And therefore, the measure of development of a country, state or region should include these non-material factors as criteria of development. So let's discuss what are those criteria other than income. Individual aspirations and goals are a mix of better income and other goals like security, respect, treatment and freedom. So many non-material things that we look for other than income to lead a good life or to live well. Other than individual goals, when we think of a nation, we must consider equally important attributes so, when we are going to judge the development of a nation, we must tag the measuring tools with income, health and education. Means other than income, we must take into account the health and educational standard of the people of that country to assess development in human terms. Because these non-material factors that is the security, respect, treatment etc. are linked to human development. Human development depends on these factors. A reason with better income may lack in health and education of its people and a reason with low income can excel in health and education standard of its people like Kerala in India. Kerala has the highest literacy in India though it may lag behind other states in per capita income. So can we judge Kerala on the basis of income only? Let us have a case study. These three states Haryana, Kerala and Bihar. Now Haryana has the highest per capita income among these three and Kerala lags behind at number two. Now let us have another table and this table shows you the infant mortality rate, literacy rate and net attendance ratio data are given and here the definitions are given you can see and understand them. Infant mortality rate means out of every thousand children who are newborn babies and they die before completing their one year. So Haryana 33 babies die before completing their one year and in Kerala it is only 10. So Kerala is ahead of Haryana and Bihar in terms of health standards for its people. Now literacy rate that is the, the population in the 7 and above age group. Here it is written. So here in Haryana it is 82 but in Kerala it is high literacy rate. So again Kerala is ahead of Haryana and Bihar. So for net attendance ratio is concerned that is children in the age group of 14 and 15 years who attend the school. It is given in percent. So 61% here Haryana and it is high at 83% in Kerala. So Kerala again leads the table. So when we take the health status and educational standards then Kerala is much ahead than Haryana and Bihar but when we compare them by income Haryana is ahead than Kerala. So can we take any decision only on the basis of the income that is the income criteria? No. We must consider other criteria also which are given in this table. And we can easily conclude that Kerala is in a better condition with better health and educational status of its people. So these parameters are also required when we judge a region or a state or a country and the status of development of its people. Next topic public facilities. The concept of public facilities refers to providing goods and services collectively with the view to make them available such facilities to more and more people. Generally public facilities are provided by government because government acts as a welfare government. It invests money for the sake of welfare of the people. But the question arises why do we need public facilities? First we take the quote from the book, money in your pocket cannot buy all the goods and services that you need to live well. So we may have money in our pocket 
but it does not mean that you will be able to buy goods and services all the time. Let us take some examples. First, money cannot buy you pollution-free environment, unadulterated medicines. The people living in Delhi have to face the brunt of pollution. You may have billions and millions of rupees, but you cannot save yourself there. And the same applies to medicines, which are adulterated medicines. If you want to live in a pollution-free environment and want to buy unadulterated medicines, then you will have to shift to a community which already are having these things. Next example, only money alone cannot protect us from infectious disease unless the people living in our community take preventive steps. Next, collective security. Now here the six, some examples of public facilities, collective security, public distribution system, public schools, hospitals, etc. are meant for public as a whole. This uh, point rises when we talk about individual efforts because if individual efforts are made to get security then if there are 10 houses then every 10 houses will need guards to secure them to provide them security but a police station is meant for public which comes under its jurisdiction so it is a collective security so public facilities are meant not for individuals but for more and more people Next, sustainability of development. Whatever resources we use today should be used in a way that they are available to the future generations. For example, the forest, the land, the natural resources that we are using today all should be used in a preserving manner, not damaging manner, so that they are able to sustain the future generations also. So this is sustainability. Let us take a quote from the book. We have not inherited the world from our forefathers. We have borrowed it from our children. What does it mean? It means that if we are using the natural resources today, then we must not think that we have got it from our forefathers. That is from our fathers and their fathers. We are not the owner of these resources because the future generations or the people who are going to born in future, we have borrowed from them. And when we borrow something, we have to return it with interest. So it means if you are using a tree today, then we must return it because we have borrowed it from the future generation. We have to return it to the future people. And with interest means at least we must return them with one more tree. And in this way, the nature resources will be available to the future generations also. Consequences of environmental degradation do not respect national or state boundaries. It is also correct because the environmental degradation or damage, for example, global warming, dry seasons, excessive snowfall, melting of ice, etc. effects are not region or national boundary specific. The polluted environment of India will have effects also on its neighboring countries. For example, the pollution of India will have effects on Nepal also, will have effects on Pakistan also. The global warming is not the problem of only one country. If the ice caps melt, then it is not going to harm only one country. So, environmental degradation has its effects felt across the national boundaries. Now, sustainability is a new knowledge area which was in the main part of Agenda 21. We have already read about Agenda 21 in Geography, Chapter 1st. We can say that it is a new knowledge area because when the natural resources were sufficient to meet our needs, then the question did not arise of preserving them. People use them fully without considering the effect of the use of natural resources because there was a good balance between use and the recreation of these resources. But when this balance was disturbed with exhaustible resources or non-renewable resources getting depleted very fast, for example, oil reserves, coal reserves, that is the fossil fuels, then people started thinking that our development model is not good and we are using the natural resources very fast and they will not be available for future generations. So we must use the nature resources in such a manner that the future generations are also able to get them and use them. And this is called sustainability. Scientists, economists, philosophers 
and other social activists are questioning the current development model of countries the people are anxious about the way the nature resources are being used this anxiety today is with some questions that where we are heading where we are leading the world today what about the future condition of environment and nature resources these questions are looming large today and this is the need of the hour that sustainability should be made part of our use of nature resources so that it can sustain our future generations that is our future generations also get the nature resources that we are using today so in this part we studied about the income and other criteria especially the health and the education then the need for public facilities and the need of sustainable development or sustainable use of resources so this part ends here for other parts you can see the video description or click the i button on the top right corner thank you thank you for watching the video see you in the next video till then goodbye take care